Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and we're taking a look at the eight race card at Ascot and it is going to be a very hot Ascot at that as well. Taking a look at the conditions on the screen at the moment, as you can see, very warm, possible thunderstorms as well in the afternoon. The movable rail out nine metres and we'll be running on a good three. So it'll be interesting to see how the horses go with the heat, how we go with the heat on course as well. Looking forward to all of it, of course, uh, leading into Christmas. Let's take a look at race number one. It is the Perth Cup at Ascot Jan 2 plate over 1,100 metres. It's Perth race number two for our Singapore viewers. And the replay that we're going to take a look at is number one, Next Generation. Finished third on debut behind Swedish Memories, going down by under two lengths. We'll take a look at that run now. And then came Infinity, and then came on the outside Savoy Queen. Inside the 250, though, and the leader going well. Swedish Memories got away by a length and a half. Getting up on the inside, Trademark, and then Next Generation. I'm incredible, dropped off completely, but it's Swedish Memories in front. Trademark's fighting on strongly on the inside from Next Generation, but it's all the way for Swedish Memories. And A nice performance there by Next Generation. Of course, it won a 400-metre trial before that, so it was a good performance on debut, finishing third over the 1,100 metres. Find a good horse as well in Swedish memories. Another horse that I've got a bit of time for is at Stablemate. Number two, I'm incredible. The winkers go on here. The blinkers coming off for Neville Parnham. Stephen Parnham takes the ride. Now, at the top of the straight, I thought this horse was just going to go straight past the next generation, also Swedish memories and win, but it uh, moved up and then all of a sudden it started dropping back. It returned with an elevated heart rate. It did over race throughout the run, and there are reports that possibly it choked down as well, so we are uh, seeing some gear changes there. So I'm going to do a forgive run, and at an each way price, I think number two, I'm incredible, will certainly be over the odds in this race. Number six, speeding comment. This is from the Simon Miller stable. Peter Nucky takes the ride. The blinkers are on as they were in the trial, and it was a very impressive trial in that. It won by seven lengths, was barely touched on that occasion as well. Barrier four. This will be the short price favourite. There is no doubt about it. We know that Simon Miller always has his uh, horses forward, and he looks a very nice type in number six, speedy comment. Another one that I really liked the trial of as well was number nine, just a dame for Stephen Rose. Sean O'Donnell takes the ride. This filly by Shower Hart just showed a little bit of attack in the line. It was slow out of the gates, which it was certainly hoped to not do on race day. But the way that it worked into the race and then attacked the line strongly, again without uh, any effort from Sean O'Donnell, I thought first up this horse could certainly uh, run a race on debut. So looking forward to seeing how she goes. Let's take a look at the selections for race number one. I'm going with each way value for giving number two, I'm incredible, and putting it on top. From number nine, just a day, number one, next generation, and number six, which will be the short price favourite, number six, Speedy Comet. Race two at Ascot, it is Perth, a race number four for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,800 metres, and an interesting race here, because we've got a couple of last start winners. Uh, who that singer, very impressive, from Mond won two starts ago, Juice and Carrot, a last start winner, as is Royal Supreme and Indigo Aura, and in this life. So there are plenty of horses coming into this race and some good form as well. And the replay that we are going to take a look at is one of those horses in form. Number three, Hudat Singer. It's won two of its last four runs. On both of those occasions, it's carried the 59 kilos. So let's take a look at that last start victory. On the outside, Secret Town. Lone Choice pulls to the centre with Express, Express Snooper ahead of it. And Jakuku back on the inside. But Hudat Singer inside the 200 is nicely clear and doing it well. From Victorious Lad, Secret Doubt. Hudat Singer in front. Victorious Lad, Secret Doubt trying hard Georgian any late but it's an easy really good performance there by number three Hudat Singer carrying the 59 kilos for the second time uh, in the last four starts winning with that again a really good ride by Pat Carberry as well out in front dictating terms and then showing that turn of foot and toughness all the way through the line dropping to the 57 kilos barrier one again I think Hudat Singer will be able to dictate terms here Number one from Mond has been in really good form as well. The last two runs have been impressive. A win over 1,400 metres. Last start stepped up to the 1,800 metres on that soft track and only finished ahead behind Arcadia Dream, which was the $1.30 short price favourite on that occasion. So I think from Mond uh, will certainly, again, enjoy the run and can even sit outside the leader on this occasion if they want. Number four, Juicing Carrots, one of the last start winners we mentioned. A really good performance beating Bourbon Dynasty. I thought the 1,400 metres would be too short here, but William Pike was able to lift uh, this horse to victory. Glenn Smith takes a Right here for trainer Alana Williams. The step up is a massive positive as well over the 1800 metres and drawn nicely in barrier six. Royal Supreme, William Pike will stay this way, of course, in the cerise and white colours. The starts before had been a little bit disappointing, but this horse has wanted ground, got it last start over the 1,420 metres and attacked the line strongly. strongly. So I think the step up to the 1,800 is also a positive. 
Number seven, Indigo Aura. Dan Morton's stable at the moment is flying. Jerry Noski riding in really good form. A winner last start by over four lengths. So those form lines from the 2,000 metres, certainly strong enough. This horse will be able to sit back and then run on strongly from barrier five, drawn perfectly with the 54 kilos as well. So expecting another good performance by Indigo Aura. Let's take a look at the selections. I'm going with number three, Hudat Singer. From number one, from one, number four, Juicing Carrots, and number seven, Indigo Aura. Race number three at Ascot, it's Perth. Race number six for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,600 metres and certainly an interesting race to analyse with some horses in good form, like Fran Japanu Monster, which returned a winner at Pinjara, and then some of Durant's runners, I think, which will be racing very well here, a jockey change with Crystal Gardens and Great Odyssey and Clint Johnson Porter and Peter Hall swapping rides there, so looking forward to analysing those two runners as well. I mentioned this horse off the top, Fran Japani Monster, a winner at Pinjara for William Pike riding Jessica Velas train, and we'll take a look at that victory now. Flight schedule at Swept Rider as they swung for home, they got about 3.50 to go, Venetian Prince that uh, margin minimised now by Sonnen who's giving chase, and here's Fran Japani Monster into the clear. Venetian Prince joined by Sonnen. Frangipani Monster inside the 200. And here comes the storm further out. Sonnen in front. Coming after it, Frangipani Monster. Sonnen and Frangipani Monster. Frangipani Monster and Sonnen. Oh, it's a photo. Strong performance by this mare. And she just continues to race honestly. Of course, she was second in the 2J Cup. She's had the 16 career starts for two victories and five seconds as well. Drawn nicely here in Barrier 2 with William Pike on board. No doubt that she can certainly be competitive. Some of the other main contenders in this race, as I mentioned, the Durant pair, Crystal Gardens and Great Odyssey. I really like Crystal Gardens in this race now that Clint Johnson Porter takes the ride. Of course, it carried the 56 and a half at last start and was just beaten by Lunar Eclipse, which came out and won again on Saturday. So now it carries the 55 and a half in a 56 to 68. And I really think uh, with the track and distance record as well, winning at that, uh, that this horse can certainly play a part. Part. Number two, Great Odyssey, uh, missed straight at the 300 metre mark last start. Still been in pretty good form though. The first up run behind Crown Choice, beaten two and a half lengths, was good. Attacked the line strongly last start as well. And Peter Hall will definitely get the best out of this gelding. There's no doubt about that. Number three, Maserati's been racing well. Ten starts are only the one victory, though the form lines at Geraldton and York have been good. But as I mentioned in the last box seat, this horse just can't seem to win. It's been running on well, but just keeps her falling short. Last start beaten three lengths by Lunar Eclipse as well, just like Crystal Garden. So we know that those form lines are holding up. The most consistent runner in this race for mine is number four, Rodeo Drive for Neville Parnham. Brad Parnham takes a ride. Of course, a winner three starts ago, followed up by a second behind Moon Search, and then only beaten at 2.8 lengths by Lunar Eclipse. Drawn wide here, but uh, she certainly is very tough. She looks very good uh, in the coat as well. She's been really uh, strengthened up this campaign. Neville Parnham mentioned that as well, that she's matured, and that's been noticed uh, with the way that she's running. Let's take a look at the selections for race number three, and I'm going with number one, Crystal Gardens, from number four, Rodeo Drive, number two, Great Odyssey, and number three, Maserati. Race number four, it's Perth. Race number eight for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,200 metres. And like a lot of the previous races, we've got a few last start winners in that. Three, in fact, in this race. And a few in some really good form as well. The likes of Main Instigator and Kiwanza as well. So a very uh, tough race to analyse. Some horses in some pretty good form. And one of those is number six, Festive Excess. A winner last start over the 1,200 metres for the first time. And we'll take a look at that run now. Pack the last one into the straight. Palace Cat first to see the judge. Festive Excess the outside. Nana King down on the rail. Hopeton punch away through now. Gets a run from Times are Changing. It's outside as Festive Excess have gone up to the lead. Trying as Hopeton. Nana King still there. Palace Cat boxing on but it's Festive Excess in front holding Hopeton who's having another lunge as the post looms and photo finishes. It was a good performance by Festive Excess. As I said the first time it had won over the 1200 metres. That was the fourth attempt. Prior to that had only won over the 1000. Now Jerry Noski takes the ride from her brother Jared Noski who will also be riding a last start winner in 11 seconds for the Ganjemi Stable. So who's elected to go that way with Jerry Noski, as I said, picking up that ride. Some other interesting runners in this race. Number four, Main Instigator. have been very impressed with the form this campaign. This horse had a bit of hype around it early on in its campaign, and since then it's come out two wins. They're beating Bourbon Dynasty by the length and a half, which raced well since. Big Caroline, it was beaten by a length as well, and that horse has come out and raced well. Last start was only beaten a length by Wicked Hunter uh, on Saturday Class Company, and led on that occasion fighting on strongly. Now, it goes up in weight because it doesn't have the claim of Fiona Bell as it has for the previous runs, but William Pike takes a ride from barrier nine and uh, his form has been very good this horse so I think main instigator can certainly play a part one that I really like in this race is number five Kiwanzo has had five attempts at the track and distance for a victory in three thirds and a lot of those runs have been in stronger company was only beaten a length by spiritual eyes at three starts ago one and a half by express dancer two starts ago now only carries a 57 kilos from barrier two with Chris Parnham taking the ride there'll be a lot of speed in this race 
and I think this will be the horse that can certainly flash home late. Outside of those, as I mentioned, Festive Excess, a good win last start. It'll be one that's on speed. And 11 seconds for the Gan Jimmy Stables. Had a little bit of a rest between that victory back on the 30th of September. Trialed on the 7th of December. Barrier 3, though, a really nice draw. And Jared Noski electing to go that way with the 55 and a half kilos. Ominous warning was the last start winner at Bunbury. A very impressive run that led throughout and then kicked away. Uh, down the final 500 metres. There's a really good run there, winning by over a length after crossing from barrier 11. Gets barrier 4 here with the 55 kilos. An illusion of light as well has been racing where you look at the four lines behind Rare Delight, Main Instigator and Wicked Hunter running on strongly attacking the line and gets a nice swing on a horse like Main Instigator. So certainly has to be included in some of your exotic betting. Let's take a look at race number four selections. I'm going with number five, Huanzo. From number four, main instigator. Number six, festive excess. And number nine, illusion of light.